NAVAIR's role of getting biofuels to the fleet is we are the technical approver. We own the specification. We are the technical warrant for aviation jet fuel. It's our job to make sure that whatever source is making our JP-5 is good to be used in our aircraft. The more sources we can get into the fleet, the more fuel that's available to meet the Secretary's 2020 goal of 50% alternate energy into the, into the Navy by 2020. So a major premise of our program is that these fuels have to be drop-in replacements. So what that means is that um, the user, whether that's the guy you're working on the fuel line or the pilot, uh, anybody in the distribution system, they don't need to know that it's from an alternative source. The whole program is basically showing that this behaves as regular fuel. So all the test points that we have now um, encompass the whole envelope and basically show that you know that in all the different areas that this that this engine operates the same way, this aircraft operates the same way on biofuel. We start with our chemists in the laboratory. They look at the fuel from a molecular basis. They look at the properties of the fuel to make sure it works. Then we move into uh, rig testing, engine testing, and all the way up to flight testing. So the flight today was just the uh, the first flight of 100% biofuel. The point was to. Uh, get airborne and start doing engine functional checks kind of in the middle of the aircraft's operating envelope to make sure that uh, basically as we start pushing out to the edges of what the aircraft can do that the fuel performs uh, the same as normal fuel and that there's no, no differences, no anomalies, uh, no problems, anything like that. What we've seen to date is biofuel appears to be basically transparent. It's, it looks exactly like JP-5 in the airplane, performs the same, and haven't noticed a difference. The trade name is ReadyJet, but um, what we call it is uh, CHCJ, and that stands for Catalytic Hydrothermal uh, Conversion to Jet. What's really unique about this fuel is it starts as a uh, bio crude. So very similar to some of the fuels we've looked at, it comes from plant sources, algal sources, uh, animal fats, whatever, those are candidate bio sources, but once, uh, what's unique about this process is the conversion. It converts that bio crude into something that has all the ingredients you need to make a fuel. Well, I think this is what we shot for from the beginning. We wanted to see, could you use a fully synthetic fuel from a non-petroleum source and prove that it can work in our system. So all our protocol development, all the lessons learned we've last for the last six years has built up to demonstrating this capability. You know, previously when we blended with petroleum, it was always, hey, you blended with petroleum, that's why the fuel was good. Now we're showing you don't need any petroleum and it's good to go and we're passing all the tests for foreign colors. There's a couple reasons in my mind why you would want 100% fuel or alternative fuel in general. Operational standpoint, if we don't have as much petroleum, then we don't want to find ourselves limited. And the approval process is rather lengthy, so it's better to be proactive about that. In terms of responsibility with the environment, you would like to think that we can all start looking and moving towards more renewable sources, and this certainly is a large step for that. It's always good to have alternatives out there, perhaps a better process to produce something, not relying on one source for fuel. You get, you know, you have multiple sources. The biofuels are made from many different feedstocks, so that gives us a lot of choices. As one source depletes, maybe another becomes available, so that um, that does buy you, uh, you know, extra flexibility and capability. And uh, and to prove that that we can use all these different things for fuel, I think is a uh, is a good thing. And I'd like to see everything kind of go to more renewable sources, and to be able to be a part of that here with the military, that's a very exciting task to be a part of to try to minimize our impact on this earth, as well as, I mean, making sure that the military is able to operate whenever it's needed to, wherever it's needed to.